Welcome back to Lesson 15, Assemblies, of the SDS2 Getting Started series. In this video, we are going to learn how to save and load assemblies into the SDS2 model. What is an assembly? An assembly is a group of 3D items that can be stored in the model and then recalled for later use. For those that are familiar with AutoCAD, in the 2D world, there was something called block or W block. Well, assemblies are like this W block in the 3D world in SDS2. So where do we find this ability to create and add these assemblies? Let's go to that model drop down menu. From here you will see that we have the save assembly option and the load assembly option. Let's begin by saving an assembly. Now it's very important when you are selecting material in SDS2 to save as an assembly that you are able to see the particular item. So for example if I were to go ahead and just do a crossing on this particular bent plate when I look in here closely we see that none of the studs were selected. The reason for this is because we were unable to see them so therefore we were unable to select them. Now Within the options in the user options, within the modeling tab, you'll see that there's a feature here called level of detail. Now, the higher the level of detail, the further you can be out and view the smaller items. The downside to this level of detail is that if you leave it at the highest, the system will be trying to render all of these solids even when you're far out, which means that a lot of these models will become slower as the system tries to render all of these objects. But that doesn't mean that you can't temporarily go in there and raise the level of detail within the user options. Now you notice I can actually see the studs, whereas before I could not. I'm going to zoom out so that we can barely see those studs and just go ahead and do a selection again using the crossing and then take a closer look at this member and we can see that we have all of these studs. Let's go ahead and also remove this main material from that selection. I am now going to add to this selection this plate that we put at the end. When you create an assembly the orientation of the object in the screen when this is saved will be the same orientation of these objects when they are brought back into the screen. We're going to take a closer look at this a little bit further down the road. Let's start off by going in and creating this assembly. So, I'm going to save the assembly. I am now going to locate a reference or insertion point if you would like to call it that. It is indicated in the steps at the top left of the screen. I'm going to use intersection construction line at 1146, lock myself in that plane, and let's go ahead and give this a name. I'll just call this simply pour stop. Finish by hitting OK. Now this assembly has been created. I'm going to bring this assembly back into SDS2. So we're going to select the load assembly. The system's going to prompt me for which member I would like to add this assembly to. I'm going to select the pour stop. Then I'm going to go ahead and locate using intersection construction line my reference point. Once I have loaded this assembly I'm going to answer yes for the correct location. Now we are currently in the member orientation screen system or coordinate system. I want to rotate this around the y-axis after I mirror it. Once the orientation is correct, I will go ahead and hit OK. Now I can continue adding assemblies to this member. If I were to go ahead and add assembly in another location on another member, it would still be added to this selected member. Let's go ahead and return. We now see that we have the studs, we can also see that we have the plate on the end, and when I go ahead and select this member we can see that all these items have been added successfully to this particular member.
I will now return to something I mentioned earlier concerning the orientation of the assembly when it is saved. Let's go ahead and go up to this beam here that has a skew. Let's say for example I want to load that pour stop. Well as you remember that pour stop assembly was saved horizontally. So when I go ahead and load that pour stop onto this skewed beam obviously the assembly is going to come in horizontal. If I go ahead and say yes, I will then have to try to determine the right rotation degree to push this into position. I'm going to show you another option. Instead, go to your navigate, come down to your rotate view. I'm going to select the two endpoints of this member which rotates my display. So now this beam is horizontal in my display. Now remember we save that assembly horizontally. Let's go ahead and load again. Select the pour stop and as you can see now this assembly is being loaded onto this beam horizontally. Go ahead and say yes. And we can see the pour stop has now been added. I would also like to mention another feature called Member Isolate Mode. Whenever you grab an object in Member Isolate Mode, it's going to set it to be horizontal. Let's go ahead and demonstrate this. I'm going to select the member, then I'm going to run the Member Isolate Mode, or Location is the one that I'm going to use, and we see that this object has been turned horizontally. I can now go to my top flange view to go ahead and open that. Should show you the screen. And then I can come in here and I can load my assembly right here in this member isolate mode. So now I've shown you two different ways that you could go ahead and load these assemblies and how they function in respect to the screen orientation. I want to finish by going back into my user options and setting and modeling back to my default the level of detail. A few more points about assembly that I'd like to mention. When you create an assembly, the holes in the material, bolts, and any user added welds or even system added welds will be saved within the assembly and will be brought back in when the assembly is loaded. Another point is that assemblies, as you can see here, are static. They're not like what we call parametrics that can be adjustable. So the item's going to come in exactly the way it was created. Now one member type that we haven't mentioned yet is called miscellaneous members. The reason I'm bringing that up now is that when you go into your model member add operations, you'll notice that there is an option to bring in what is called miscellaneous members and you'll see that within miscellaneous members you can bring it in as an assembly. Now what's the difference here? Well when I bring that assembly and attach it to a member it's just part of a member but if I want to make that assembly its own member I can go ahead and select assembly locate the point where that miscellaneous member is going to be select the assembly and I can now go ahead and bring in that particular assembly. Let's go ahead and delete that because this is just for demonstration. Finally, how do you remove an assembly from that queue or from that list? You go into something called utility functions, delete job items, and you'll see in the delete job items assemblies which allows you to come in and remove those assemblies from the project. You don't have to remove them, but if you do want to clean them up, you can go ahead and use that feature. One important point that I did forget to mention. These 3D assemblies can be copied from project to project using the utility functions, copy job items, then select the assembly option. This now concludes assemblies in SDS2.